Hey everyone, this is Gleb and today I want to show you how cool it is to use Cypress component testing to verify that a value of function prop like on value change is really called by the component, in this case numeric format from react number format library whenever the input changes. So I include the numeric format or import it and then I can use it as if I was writing JSX and I use scimount command to mount the React component. And I can see the component on the page. It becomes a mini web application and I can use it and the component notice formats the numerical uh, value that shows a um, currency amount. And notice that I'm selecting the component just like I'm selecting or could select end-to-end -end component on the browser. I'm using scyclear command. And so every time I save my source file or the spec file, it reruns the test. So notice when I clear the component, right? We can see initially it had one, two, three, four, and when I clear it, it calls on value change. And I can see the parameters for that call. I can see that it has a couple of things, two arguments. One is an object with formatted value, value, and so on. And then the event that causes um, the value prop call. So I want to confirm that it was really called. So I gave that synon stub an alias. Now I can get that alias and I can say should be called once. And I can say, okay, I know the first argument. It's float value undefined, formatted value empty string, value empty string. Okay, perfect. So we confirm that when we clear the input, the on value change receives this empty object. Okay, now we're gonna type 50.99 and notice that our on value change was called five times. It was called five times because it is called for each character. So four digits plus dot, the dot. And just to make our confirmation easier, we can clear the Sinon stub series of calls. We can invoke reset history, I believe. Okay, so we confirm that it was called with the argument when we clear it. And now we can confirm, for example, on value change its first call. And then we can grab the arguments and the first argument just by using deep nested property access. And let's zoom in and just find out what that value was. Well, formatted value, right, was $5. So the first call was when we entered the digit 5. And so if we just enter the digit 5, then the first argument to the value prop function should be this function. Okay. And similarly, we can confirm the next two calls. So Sinon has short hands for the second call and the third call. And so this would be 50, 5, 0, and 50 number. And then we enter the dot. So formatted value should be something like this. And the value of the float number should be just 50. Now, unfortunately, there is no third call, fifth call. So the last couple of calls, we would have to get the call by invoking Sinon method get call and the index starts with zero. So zero, one, two, and then three. And then we can say it's arguments and now it's nine, 50.9 as a string, 50.9. And the same for the last call. So get call index four because it starts with zero again and it should be fifty dollar fifty dot nine nine fifty nine nine and the floating point number is fifty nine now this is a little bit verbose okay and quite cumbersome so think about what we can do to verify all five calls argument at once we can invoke get call so this returns us an array and in each item in that array, right, there should be five of them. We want to map it to its 
arguments and the first argument. And this SciMap comes from my Cypress map plugin, which includes a bunch of queries, commands that are tribal and so on. So let me just do this and print and just comment the rest for now. Okay, so notice right here what we are getting. We're getting an array of just the first argument for each call. And so we can copy it and remove individual calls. And instead say, once you get the first argument from each call, shoot deep equal and then this array. And now we're confirming it at once and we're going to remove print. And now the only problem right here is that we don't really see each array. Now we could do the following. We could increase the chai fresh, actually chai truncate fresh hold. I don't remember if it's a globe. Okay. Maybe 600. Okay. Now we increase the chai uh, threshold before it collapses objects, but it still is kind of verbose. And if there is a problem, for example, if we say, okay, not 50, but like a dot is missing, the whole assertion miss, like, misses and it's hard to determine the actual difference in those big objects. So here's what we can do instead. We're going to import Spock from my library called site Spock. Okay. And instead of deep equal, what we're going to say, we're going to say should Spock and then just give the object that we know should be a sub object of the entire thing. Okay. So now notice it actually splits it up and it compares each item in this array one by one and it's known properties. And it shows that Spock zero is correct. One, two, three, four, but the formatted value 50 point point, right? Is incorrect. So we'll have to fix it. Okay. And now everything is correct and it clearly shows each sub object of this big array. So this is how Cypress map and size pack can work in Cypress component tests to verify the sequence of calls made by the component to the prop that you pass when you mount it. For more, read the blog post I'm going to link in the description of this video.